Hi, so there's a lot going on at the moment. Um, last night it was being reported that Rishi Sunak's supporters are suggesting he's already crossed the 100 MP threshold for support to be the next leader and therefore Prime Minister. I think we're going to see Rishi Sunak as Prime Minister on Monday. It won't formally be declared to them probably, but I think that's what's going to happen. Um, I came across an interesting uh, report yesterday as well that cited a YouGov poll that showed that Boris Johnson was actually less popular than Theresa May early in his premiership. I didn't realise that, if I'm being honest, I did not realise that. But it puts one of the myths, um, I, you know, it sort of challenges one of those myths that Boris is this hugely popular figure with the public. Maybe not so much. It may well be, for example, he got that decisive election victory in 2019 simply because Corbyn was such a, um, you know, polarising figure himself. So uh, these Tories that are saying, you know, we need to bring back Boris as the unifying candidate, they're deluded. Um, I think bringing back Boris Johnson would be the death knell of the Conservative Party for some time. I mean, this is a man who is uh, who lost the premiership because a significant portion of his own MPs couldn't trust him. So what sort of message would it be to bring him back? It's just absurd. Um, no doubt there'll be a lot more to say about that. I'll be watching developments uh, as they go on throughout the day. Um, the other thing is, I wasn't going to talk about this, but I may as well give an update. Um, Sky News has released a video that shows more clear footage of what happened at the Manchester Chinese Consulate. And it is even more clear that uh, those so-called diplomats tried to drag the young man inside, Bob Chan, and beat him up, basically. The Greater Manchester Police, um, the police these days get a lot of criticism, but on this occasion, I do give the police credit. They have done their level best to protect the young man. Uh, they did not fully enter the compound. They simply helped to bring him out again. Uh, I say huge credit to those officers. You know, they've done the uniform proud under stressful trying situations but these so-called diplomats who are behaving like common thugs need to be kicked out of the country it's a disgrace um we should not sort of just let this go under the radar um i know that james cleverly summoned the chinese ambassador over this incident the chinese of course are being defensive and claiming that they were provoked but the footage shows otherwise the footage shows that they staged the incident they tried to make it look like their consulate was under attack, and they're going to say this is Chinese territory. Actually, no, it's not a full embassy. If this had happened inside the embassy in London, they might be able to claim that. But a consulate, unless I'm mistaken, is not full um, territorial ground. And anyway, it was outside the compound. You know, this was happening at the gate. So um, I think we should really take the gloves off, kick them out, send out a message to Beijing that they can't behave this way. Well, actually charge them with assault as well. No diplomatic immunity. But if there is that, which would be, you know, really bad, um, we should at least kick them out. Um, I know that uh, an activist I know and respect, Benedict Rogers, has taken part in a, in a rally in London against this incident. Um, him and others are going to speak at that. Um, this is absolutely unacceptable. We cannot have a hostile foreign government thinking it could behave this way on British soil. So we do need to take a hard line. I, I trust James cleverly will. I mean, he's no pushover. He's a former soldier. Um, he's not going to be easily pushed around by the Chinese. So, yeah, we need to take a tough line with this. Uh, but actually, neither of those things is what I intended to talk about. I just wanted to mention them in passing. Just stop oil. Now, uh, I sometimes wonder do I give them too much attention. But, you know, I made that video recently. Um, one of my subscribers, Toxic Holy Grenade, you asked why I called them activists. I totally agree with you. I don't think they should deserve to be called that. Uh, but the whole point of that video was to try and reach out to them. Well, yours was the only comment. So. I've done my job, I tried to reach out to them, it's there for the record, they could take it or leave it. But for this one, you know, no such niceties. Um, they have blood on their hands. I'm going to read out an article because this is quite shocking. Um, my apologists, before I read this, apologists will say, oh, this could have happened anyway. I don't really accept that because the circumstances were such that, um, well, I'm just going to read it out and people can 
make of this what they will. Um, Just Stop Oil protesters have been accused of having blood on their hands after two women, including a mother of four, were killed in a traffic collision. Um, this reports by Will Bolton in the Daily Telegraph. Lisa Weber, who was in her 50s, was hit by a BMW X5 and knocked uh, into oncoming traffic after stopping on the hard shoulder of the M20 to help another motorist who lost control in the wet conditions. Hundreds of drivers were forced to divert onto the motorway after just stop oil activists suspended themselves in hammocks over the Queen Elizabeth II Bridge for two days, causing traffic chaos. Domestic terrorists, as far as I'm concerned. Builder Mark Heap, 55, who suffered a broken back and broken leg after he too stopped to help the stranded motorist, accused the protesters of being partially responsible for the collision. Speaking to me online from his hospital bed, he said these eco warriors may have thought it was innocent protests, but they've got blood on their hands. I don't think they deliberately caused the crash, but their actions, bringing the traffic to a standstill on the M20, caused the crash in which those two women died. Describing the events that led up to the fatal collision, he said the women, uh, the woman driver, initially, the crash initially had aquaplane because of the rain. Her car spun out and hit the crash barrier. She was a dark-haired lady in the car. She was hysterical. I stopped to help her, and Lisa Weber stopped as well. She was driving a black Golf. Just continue the report. It's still loading. Um, uh, I went back to the scene and we all got hit by the BMW. I was squashed between the car and the crash barrier along with the driver. A team of tree surgeons from Oxley's Tree Care were the first to attend the victims of the crash and attempted to give CPR and first aid. This is awful. Ms. Webb's, Weber's father, Clive Krause, posted on Twitter to thank the men for their actions. He added, we would like to meet you guys to thank them and help us be at peace and lay our daughter to rest. The other victim of the crash was said to be a woman in her 40s. South East, ambulance, uh, South East Coast Ambulance excuse me, said it was unable to comment on the incident until the police investigation had been completed. Officers from Kent Police's serious collision investigation unit are still working to establish the full circumstances surrounding the crash. On Friday, just stop oil protests have stopped traffic at a key junction near Holborn Station in London. On Friday morning at 10.50 a.m., 22 activists walked into the road at the junction between High Holborn and Kingsway. They sat on the road with banners while some glued themselves to the tarmac. Police confirmed an hour later that 16 protesters had been arrested. Among them was an 80-year-old Reverend Sue Parfit. As she was led away, she said, I am doing this because we are on the brink of the greatest catastrophe that human beings have ever known. The government and public have got to wake up to that. Just Stop Oil has been contacted for comment. Um, well, I've posted that on their page to see if they can find some conscious. I don't, don't think they will. Now, uh, just a quick word on that reverend. Um, some people will say, you know, oh, uh, we should sympathise with her because of her age, and you can be sure that Just Stop Oil will be promoting it that way. I actually have an idea about this, you know. I was brought up to, the, to respect the elderly. Uh, I would give up my seat on a bus and so on and so on. But I also think if you're an 80-year-old person, you have had 80 years to know better. 80 years to know that these sort of brain stunts don't work. So I've no sympathy for her, and I think she should be arrested. Also, she's a Christian um, reverend. Where's the Christian charity of deliberately causing stress and pain to other people? I think it's callous. I think it's arrogant. So no, I have no sympathy for her. These, of course, were uh, gentle with her and all the rest of it, as probably need to be, but... You know, she should be arrested. She should be charged. She could be 90, as far as I'm concerned. As long as, you know, her memory's there and she doesn't suffer any sort of dementia or anything like that. She knows what she was doing. Charge her, just like the others. I don't think that she should be given special treatment because of her age. I'm not suggesting she should go to prison for years, but if there's a fine involved, take it out of her pension. Absolutely. Um... But, you know, this is this is really serious. So two women have lost their lives. A man has been seriously injured. Probably life-changing injuries if his back is broken. This is very serious. And I think it's incredible it hasn't happened until now. Now, apologists will say, oh, but they didn't cause the accident directly. That could have happened anyway. It was the rainy conditions or whatever. But the fact of the matter is, 
traffic was diverted onto the motorway, would the accident have happened without the protest? Less likely, far less likely, because it caused a traffic gridlock. It caused um, this sort of situation to develop. So I do think they've got blood on their hands. But they're, they're so arrogant, they're so incapable of introspection, they'll probably say, oh, we were sorry for the women involved, but it's not our fault. That's how callous they are. I, quite frankly, have total contempt for them. Uh, and I think that there needs, I've mentioned the approaches I think that need to be taken. Um, I definitely think they should be prescribed. Um, I think hardcore activists, I think those two that got onto the bridge should definitely serve prison sentences, unquestionably. Um, I, I think it would be a travesty if they just got a slap on the wrist. I think they should serve prison sentences. Um, in fact, if I were the families of those women, if I were um, you know, a family member, I'd be seriously looking at taking legal action for manslaughter. They might not win because probably it would be ruled that it was the conditions or whatever that caused it. But I honestly think, you know, people who are disrupted by this lot need to seriously think about getting together. Individually, it's difficult. But if they get together, you know, if they reach out to other people who were caught up by these stunts, if they get together, I think they could get legal representation and really get something going. Sue the hell out of them. Make them bankrupt. Um, all these groups are interconnected. Extinction Rebellion, <clears throat> excuse me, Just Stop Oil, Animal Rebellion, you can be sure that they're all interconnected. So I say, um, you know, take action against them. There's people at the top, people like Roger Hallam. Uh, I think a legal case could be made against him as the instigator. He has literally said that we need to bring down governments. Um, <clears throat> you know, they had a sarcastic post about Liz Truss saying, Liz Truss zero to stop oil one. Well, that's obviously a distortion. Yeah, Truss is a political failure, but at least she stepped down when she no longer had the support of her own party. Just Stop Oil, on the other hand, continue to ignore the democratic will of the British public, which is for them to stop their antics. Um, you know, the main group, I'm talking about the main group of Just Stop Oil has 11,000 members or likes, 11,000 in a country of 68 million. So this is a very, very, very fringe organisation. Um, once in a blue moon, you'll see people defending them. If you have a news report about this, about 90% of the comments, no exaggeration, is against them. Even people who say they agree with the concerns are against the tactics. Um, but they arrogantly are saying, we're not going to stop, we're going to continue. Um, I hate them, to be quite honest. To put it bluntly, to put it candidly, I hate them. I hate what they're doing. Um, and I think it's just sociopathic. I think it's dangerous, callous, selfish. Um, and I would like to see much tougher action against them. I know that Transport for London has an injunction against Extinction Rebellion, but they need to get a new High Court injunction against Just Stop Oil. Well, the High Court needs to make that process as straightforward as possible. Um, it is about time society fights back against these anarchists, because honestly, we cannot have a situation where a minority of people are holding the country to ransom. And that's effectively what's happening. You know, when they were up on that bridge, I really saw that as terrorists holding the public hostage and making ransom demands. That's basically what it is, because they're basically disrupting thousands of lives. You know, I lost my temper with a guy the other day who I always kind of got on OK with. This is someone on a joint forum that I'm on. He's left wing, but I always thought he was sort of centre left and sort of sensible, because most of his positions are. But bizarrely, he's come out and sort of defended the antics of Just Stop Oil, and he got into this really evasive response about, well, we need to look at two separate issues. Um, does the government in issue? Uh, does the government listen and to tactics work? And it, his whole response is just totally evasive. And I was asking him directly, do you support these tactics or not? Yes or no. And he wouldn't answer the question, but he ended up basically playing the devil's advocate for them. Um, and I was disappointed by that because I honestly thought the guy was smarter than that. But, um, you know, one of these women was a mother of four. The other woman will have loved ones who care about her. And now those young women have died as a result of their antics. Um, I... If I were the family of those people affected, I'd be seeing red, 
I really would. Um, I just think that this, these vile groups are really, I, I don't know where this is going to lead. I mean, they threatened to escalate. What does that mean? Are they going to get involved in acts of sabotage? Are they going to blow up petrol stations? Um, I do think they have crossed the threshold of domestic terrorism because they are threatening militant action to hold the public and the government to ransom. That's terrorism, as defined by the 2000 Terrorism Act. I mean, I also think that the press needs to stop normalising them as protesters and activists. What can they be called? Um, I suppose activists isn't exactly an endearing title. It just means that they're doing what they're doing. But definitely I would stop calling them protesters. I mean, I'd favour calling them criminals or offenders. They just stop oil offenders because they are technically offenders. They've committed criminal offences. They all have a record now. Um, but definitely they should stop being called protesters. As long as the press calls them protesters, it legitimises them. And what they're doing is totally illegitimate. It's not peaceful protest. That's another thing that needs to be fiercely challenged. When they spout out, well, we're in, this is peaceful protest, they need to be robustly challenged. And as for their apologists, people like James O'Brien of LBC, you know, he would never himself get involved in this behaviour because he has a job at LBC. Uh, you know, he shamefully defends it and he tries to paint them as courageous. There's nothing courageous about stopping babies getting to hospital. He, he maybe thinks that because they're hated right now. Well, is being hated... I mean, hell, Liz Trust said she didn't mind being hated, but was pushing ahead with a budget that was helping the rich courageous? Not really, no. So um, simply being unpopular isn't necessarily a sign of courage. It's a sign of arrogance. Um, I, I'm not sure that it is that courageous. I mean, you could argue that knowing that you're going to be subject to public vitriol kind of takes tough skin, I guess. Um, and those two clowns that got up on the bridge, you know, well, one of them was an engineer, so he obviously knew what he was doing. But um, it's, it's obviously putting themselves at risk. Is it brave? I don't know. I really don't know. Was it brave of Emily Davison to run out at the King's Derby, endangering the jockey's life, incidentally? She got killed. The suffragettes, the suffragettes said that was uh, martyrdom, but she'd actually bought a return ticket that day. That's the interesting thing. But the thing about the suffragette analogies, this is very important to keep drawing these analogies. Um, the peak of suffragette activity was 1913. Okay. Um, now, the Women's Suffrage Act, or actually the representation of the People Act, was 1918. So five years later, what happened in that time? World War One. World War One. we saw the changing demographics. I mentioned this in the last video. I think that had a much bigger role in getting votes for women, actually, than the militant suffragette activity. It's also important to remember not all suffragettes were militant. They weren't all planting bombs in their boxes. There were more moderate suffragists, actually, the suffragettes, if I've got this right, were the militant ones. Suffragists were the more moderate faction and you know they were working hard they weren't blowing up letterboxes they weren't putting lives at risk um the film suffragette obviously is very much from their perspective but that even showed that you know their tactics were polarizing um anyway that's the reality the militant suffragette activity of 1913 did not immediately get women to vote other factors did so these just stop oil people that said, oh, well, people will hate us now. They'll be thanking us in the future. They're utterly deluded because these groups have not grown support. If that theory were true, if their tactics were working, then you would have seen between 2019 when this sort of began and now, they would have really got much, much wider support. They haven't. They have utterly, utterly failed. In fact, Extinction Rebellion has sort of went off the radar because these other groups these branch-off groups have taken the attention. Um, they have utterly failed. 